Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. I have a power issue on Seeker and it's this thing that's causing my problems. It's been using twice the juice that a new one does. And if you have one of these at home, you can buy a new one, pay for it in less than two years, and then start saving about 75 bucks a year. That's not bad. And all it takes, one of these cheap little watt meters from Amazon or someplace else, I'll put a link in the description. It's worth doing. As for you, walk the plank. That's sunrise. What a cool morning. Gotta pardon my voice, I got a cold. Look, Bubba's back, hanging out up there. Yeah, you left some gifts for us. So we are off to correct this electrical problem. This one is supposed to pull 0.45 kilowatt hours per day. That'll be a big improvement. So, home she goes. Oh, there's that little boat. Not the big one. A lot of dolphins in here this morning. Need to take advantage of one of these calm mornings here to adjust that mainsail sheets too. This would be a good day for that. Just wish I was feeling a little better. It's gonna be a lot better than this deep freezer. We're at 0.72 and we're uh, just over half a day of being plugged in. I wish this thing had a, a timer on it that tells you actually how long it's been plugged in and monitoring it, you know, so it could give you the estimated for the day, but it does have time on it, but that says uh, eight hours. It's been plugged in for more like 13 right now, so I think that's probably just the time that it's actually been pulling amperage. That's not a very helpful number. You know, what really counts is how much it's been pulling over a 24-hour period. That would be very helpful. We're on our way to dinner, but we're gonna say hello to our friends here on Wild Hearts. If you guys wanna go cruising in Pensacola area, there's a phone number right there. Call them up, Zach will give you a ride, won't ya? <laughs> they uh, put the plastic on after it's painted, then they press break the metal and put the hinges and parts on. So if you're one of those anal people, you're, you're not going to get all the plastic off. <laughs> Best thing to do is just run your knife down the edge, cut a little of the meat, you'll get most of it off. This is going to take an hour to get the plastic off. Well, I do like the fact that it has two baskets. That'll help. Yep. Looks like a deep freezer. Now let's plug it in. Give it six hours is what we're supposed to do at level four. And it's been standing upright for well over four hours is what it needs to be. You shouldn't lay them on their side then stand them up and plug them in without letting four hours go by because there'll be oil where it shouldn't be on the compressor. So don't do that. And we'll go ahead and let our old one do a full 24 hours. It's about a 94 degree day today. And we'll see what power consumption it actually ends up with. This is intermission. It's a sick day, okay? I can take intermissions. We're gonna go see the Gulf of Mexico. It's just right over the beach there. Gulf of Mexico, not much surf. Kind of flat today. Wow, water's a lot clearer out here. Okay, time to go back to work. Show you the wildlife. There's sea turtles nesting. Shh, you have to be very, very quiet. Hey, there's really not much to this wattage thing. It's just voltage times amperage. Electricity has two ways of measuring it, and you need both of them. Kind of like pressure and gallons per minute on a water hose, you know? Uh, amperage is like uh, the water flowing through the hose, and voltage is like how much pressure it has behind it. So, higher voltage, it can jump bigger gaps. Uh, more amperage, it can power bigger machinery. So multiply the two together, you get wattage, and then we can compare every, everything. You know, it doesn't matter if it's uh, AC or DC, it's wattage, it's voltage times amperage. And then kilowatts, that's a thousand watts. And kilowatt hours, that's a thousand watts over one hour. There's some deep water. All right, she's happy now. Now here's the important sticker you see on these appliances and that right there 218 kilowatts hours estimated yearly electrical use. Alexa 218 divided by 365. 
218 divided by 365 is approximately 0 0.5973. 0 0.5973, so about 0 0.6 kilowatt hours per day. That's gonna be about half what this one ends up with. So yeah, we've done ourselves good here. If it actually does this, we will check it. <laughs> Sunset, Bubba shows up to take his spot on the top of the mast. Just likes his good sunsets. All right, just a few minutes past 24 hours, and we have 1.48 kilowatts used. Wow. All right, I think that'll be easy to beat. And while we're here, there's lots of numbers that this thing spits out, but really the one you want is kilowatt hours. That's uh, what you pay for on your bill. You can actually program in your cost per kilowatt hour into this thing. It'll give you the cost, but you know, anywhere in the world, it comes down to kilowatt hours, whether you're on a boat and whether you're getting your power from the grid or from solar panels, kilowatt hours is the thing to look at. The rest of these are like, you know, that's the high wattage, the peak wattage, but who cares? You don't know how long that was running at that level. Kilowatt hours. The rest of this is, that's uh, the volts, 120 volts, 60 hertz. It's going to be really beautiful because it's coming off my inverters, which you're not even supposed to run the new deep freezer on an inverter. They'll tell you that, but that doesn't really count if you have good inverters. If you have Chinese inverters, you know, maybe you don't want to run a Chinese deep freezer off of it, but uh, I have Outbacks, Victrons, all those good inverters. They'll be just fine. So I really wish they'd make this gadget give me kilowatt hours and give me the ability to know what that total is over a 24-hour period or whatever I set into it. What's interesting here, too, is it's been on for 24 hours, just a few minutes over, and it's still showing uh, zero days here. So it's a helpful gadget, but don't be too flustered by all the numbers on it. Just check the kilowatt hours. And that'll give you a good idea of what that appliance is really using. You can run it for a day or two days. It was a hot day today, so it's gonna be a hot day tomorrow. So we're gonna compare the new defreezer to the old one and see what it does. I'm gonna move everything over into it, let it settle in for a little while, and then we'll start our 24 hour clock running. Okay, all packed up. The nice feature about this gadget is it has a battery, so if you unplug it, it you're going to remember where it was. But you got to press this little button here, and that clears the memory. So now you can plug it into a new appliance and start over. Okay, the defreezer is down to temperature, so we're going to start the meter running. We'll see what it says tomorrow, 24 hours from now. And as a side note, you go through here and you can find wattage. That's what it's using right now, which is zero, which tells me that this deep freezer has no parasitic uh, draw on it. And that's important. That means when it's off, it's off. In other words, uh, you know, like your microwave, you plug it in, it has a clock. Well, you're not using the microwave, but it's using a little bit of juice, too. So we'll show you a little solution for parasites. All right, I'm tired of taking Bubba's shit, okay? <laughs> His days are numbered here. It's not bad to clean it off. You clean it off immediately. But boy, if you let it dry on there a day, it's like, stick them. Yeah, it's not just Bubba. I gotta clean up after it's myself too, because we work metal out here. And every time we shower everything with little pieces of steel, you get a little rust spot. It's not this piece rusting. This is stainless. It's uh, the little specks that stick to it. And that's what I got all around the boat. I think it's just gonna be part of my boat. I'm not gonna go away. We're gonna keep working metal. Oh yeah, that's much better. Well, it's the afternoon already and the battery chargers are in float. That means the battery should be up. And yeah, there's 71 and 59 and they're charging at 12 amps. That's about, uh, well, that's 24 volts. So it's amperage times voltage. Or 288 watts is being taken on board and that is wattage that is not going to the old deep freezer. And you might be thinking, what does Bubba have to do with this video? I mean, a bird? Yeah, a bird has something to do with my power. Uh, I spent the morning cleaning up the decks, but I just now looked up here on my solar panels. Yeah, where you get bird shit, you don't get solar. Uh, and he's got my sails too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Bubba's going. First deep freezer, next the bird. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he, he's back. Damn. There you go. 
Keep going. Find someplace else, Bubba. Yes, yes, yes. Go to the condos. There's a whole marina full of boats right that way. You just... Okay, 24 hours. And the old deep freezer did 1.4. This one does 0.7, so actually just cut it in half. So with the national average of 23 cents per kilowatt hour, this old deep freezer would cost you $150 a year. The new one would cost you 75. Now it's smaller, but I can get everything I want inside of it. So it's going to fit my needs perfectly because it's half the power. That means my batteries have another 0.7 kilowatt hours tonight that they didn't have yesterday. Success. Now that actually comes to 255 kilowatt hours per year and you might be wondering well why is this so much lower and the reason for that is I don't have this sitting inside of an air-conditioned environment we're in you know we had 95 today so so that's going to take some off of it and then how many times did you open the door because there's ice cream in there I opened that door a couple times today so your mileage will vary now let's talk about parasitic losses I got this on my Starlink now and we are pulling Alright, there it is. Starlink. It's 5.1 watts when you're not doing anything. And when I'm watching a video, it's 45 watts. And if I'm uploading a video, it's 83 watts. So, don't upload videos on rainy days. But Starlink, we're going to put it on a switch so we can turn it off at night. Because if we're here, we don't need any notifications from the boat. We've got everything we need. So the watt meter does do just straight up watts that is helpful because you look at what it's doing in real time and the instapot and the microwave and the curd are all parasites so the way to fix that put them on a common power strip shut down the whole thing and if you have a plasma screen tv check it plug your watt meter in there look at straight up watts wow look at that nine watts 9.3 and it's not even on it's just you know listening for the remote control yeah that gets a switch these are cheap you can pick them up off amazon and that's all you need now when you want to watch tv turn the tv on that's it that's how to rid yourself of parasites all right let's do a little dc too because dc works just like ac as far as watts go you multiply the amps times the voltage you get the wattage the nice thing about dc you can Stick your finger in here, and this is all 12 volt stuff, so I can't get uh, uh, energized. And you're not going to be able to use that watt meter. You're going to need a multimeter with an amperage readout on it, which is way down there on this one. And these are a bit of a pain too, because you got to put this in the line. So I'd have to disconnect the wire from there and then run it across through the meter and it would tell me how many amps it's pulling. Uh, that's a pain to do, there's an easier way. And the other problem is uh, a lot of these are fused and it's pretty easy to find a circuit that pulls more amps than the fuse inside your uh, maybe inexpensive amp meter can do. I've blown a lot of fuses inside these things. So now that's one way. You can get these for just like a few bucks at uh, Harbor Freight. This this one is a fluke it's not a few bucks what I recommend if you're gonna spend some money is you do it on something like this, this is the clamp meter and it goes up to 400 amps all you got to do is get the positive wire with the arrow going to the load see it has a little arrow in there that's got to go toward the load I've had it backwards and it's, I think they work just fine but hey you know look like a professional even if you're not and my question here is my crane it has a remote control on it that's on all the time it's in that direction and it is pulling 0.4 amps maybe 0.5 now it's settled in at 0.4 but let's call it 0.5 because the math is easier <laughs> we know it's 12 volts and 0.5 amps that's six watts that it's pulling and it's doing that 24 7 around the clock so I think I'm going to add a switch to turn off the crane's power. I could do that in the box up there, but more likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a switch on the console and use a relay in here because I think, yeah, I got room for one more relay. Relays are wonderful. See, this little wire comes down from the pilot house and what it does, it energizes a magnet in here. In fact, these things actually can be removed. See, that's all it is, a little relay circuit. So you can even disconnect them like a fuse or replace them if need be but it triggers that and then what that does is it connects those red wires back there to these wires in the front one at a time to turn these things on they even have a little LED along here that tells me when one of them is on up on the console so I'm gonna put one more in here that turns on 
this circuit here, the crane, and that way I can turn the crane off and save that little measly amount of power. But you do it, you know, for every day of the year. We don't run the crane, but uh, maybe once every couple of weeks, so it'll save us some power. Oh, and look at there, I even have a spare wire run down from the console already, so it'd be an easy thing to do. See, in our deck crane, inside the box, there's the radio receiver that takes power all the time because it's been always on. Now, we'll have a switch on the console. There we go. When we don't need it, keep it off. <coughs> well, the coal's not completely gone, but I'm feeling good enough to adjust the sails a little bit. Got my calm morning. Good old 16-penny nail comes in really handy for adjusting. I got them shoved through the lines there to keep them from slipping through the UFRO and until I get them where I want them. Then I'll put a knot in there. That's looking pretty good to me. I need a downhaul for that bottom batten, but she's a lot better than she was. Doing the other side the same way. I think that's better. We're gonna have to really get her out with some weight on the sails before we know for sure. But that'll have to wait for a day with more wind. So that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, saved some money on your appliances at home. Take that money and buy a tool. Go out in your shop, build something great. Send us the photo. We find it inspirational. Y'all have a great day. Somebody is writing a comment telling me I shouldn't have dumped that freezer into the water, but I think it'd make a good fishing environment, actually, you know, like a little artificial reef out there. Yeah.